Good evening, fam. Our latest will be about Deputy President Paul Mashadile, John Steinhazen, and the Freedom Front Plus leader, as well as Mr. President. Let's follow up on that. DA leader John Steinhazen and Freedom Front leader confirmed that they are trailing uh, on Ramaphosa and Paul Mashadile. Mashadile is accused of dishonesty and corruption and charges will be initiated soon. Freedom Front Plus leader on the other side confirmed that they want to reinstate Palapala farm case against Mr. President. According to the DA and Freedom Front Plus, if all goes well, Ramaphosa and Paul Mashadile will have to step down from their official duties and this might mean John R. will take over. Please listen to them in the next slide and let us know of your take regarding what we've covered. And that's all we have for now. Thank you so, so much for tuning in. I'll see you again next time. Bye. The DA has also submitted a formal complaint to Parliament's Joint Committee on Ethics and Members' Interest for a breach of the Code of Conduct by Mashatile for failure to disclose registrable interests or for willfully or negligently providing the registrar with incorrect or misleading details. Mashatili also faces allegations to having misled Parliament for failing to declare his use of various properties, including a 37 million rand waterfall house in Kauteng. In addition to this, Mashatili also breached the code of conduct by failing to act in all respects in a manner that is consistent with the integrity of the office of his government. Given that the appointment of the president, of the deputy president, is entirely at the discretion of the President himself, the DA last week submitted a dossier of the allegations to the Presidency. Mr. We gave the President until Sona to make an announcement in regard about what he intended to do with these serious allegations. To date, the President has remained completely unresponsive to any of the allegations and refuses to answer questions around the suitability or otherwise of his appointment as the Deputy President of Mr. Paul Mashatile. It comes as no surprise to us that the President has once again failed to act against members of his own party who are facing these particular serious charges. It follows the fact that 97 members of his party, including members of the Executive, who were named in the Zondo Commission report, remain in office without any consequences for the acts of omission and commission whilst they were entrusted with acting in the best interest of the people of South Africa but instead chose to line their own pockets or to benefit their own networks around this particular issue. I want to pay tribute this morning as well to the brave journalists at News24 and other news outlets who have doggedly pursued this particular matter. News 24's series called Machatile Unmasked has traced the money, it has followed the connections in various locations, and I think has done exceptional work in bringing this matter to the public's attention. Well, that, uh, as you said, uh, the first uh, goal we've uh, maintained, but we as opposition parties must also now uh, ensure that we work together uh, to ensure that we can hold whoever the government is for the executive that they must be accountable to Parliament. That is most important. As I said, for the first time, the ANC won't be able to misuse its majority to make the National Assembly a rubber stamp of the governing party. They won't be able to misuse the majority in Parliament, for instance, to prevent investigations against the news. I, for instance, will ask that the panel uh, findings on the Pala Pala issue, he will be submitted to the National Assembly. And in that way, we as opposition parties can ensure that at least whatever the government is, that they are accountable to Parliament and accountable to the people.